are you presenting something rare sir uh, not really this is not a rare disease uh, hyperaldosteronism is not suspected at the first place and it is very common cause of secondary hypertension often missed uh, today i am going to discuss about the case i would discuss about how to suspect it and then how to confirm by test and what is the treatment to so stay till the end of the slide so that you are aware of everything a good idea to subscribe the channel because i'll keep on posting new videos with an educational material so first the case now this patient was a 60 years male with a long standing hypertension and diabetes presented to us with an uncontrolled blood pressure and uh, the patient was on amlodipine uh, olmisartan bisoprolol and lorthalidone meaning that he was on four drugs including one diuretic and the bp was not controlled so this is a resistant hypertension and we did an echo on this patient an echo showed a left ventricular hypertrophy on a parasternal long axis view on a short axis view and now you can see there is a global longitudinal strain which is reduced with a kind of uh, cherry on the top position what does that mean sir uh, see when we have a left ventricular ejection fraction which is normal and you want to see early systolic dysfunction right in this patient probably because of long standing hypertension and diabetes the global longitudinal strain is on the lower side where the ejection fraction is maintained this is pre ejection fraction or early systolic dysfunction we can say so now this patient categorized as a resistant hypertension you have a blood pressure more than 140 or 90 and the you need another drug and this is Uh, no drug added this is called resistant hypertension who add a fourth drug and if bp is controlled it's called controlled resistant hypertension and in case you need to add another drug then it is called a, a drug resistance now these are the classifications given by international guidelines resistant hypertension is the number of hypertensive 3 to 5 including one diuretic controlled the resistant and refractory hypertension this patient i would call it as a refractory hypertension with four medicines the blood pressure still is not controlled it's very prevalent all across the world and unfortunately the resistant hypertension also accounts for about 20% of the total hypertensive population so we should have a step wise approach to a resistant hypertension we first need to rule out a pseudo hypertension that we should do an ambulatory blood pressure monitoring blood pressure monitoring at home and we should use a uh, take care of if the patient is taking nsaids or patient is taking steroids or excessive salt which can actually cause uh not a fall in the blood pressure then we should rule out secondary causes and here again i put primary hyperaldosteronism as the number one cause and it is actually obstructive sleep apnea and hyperaldosteronism are very common causes of secondary hypertension which should be ruled out and once you do detect secondary uh, resistant hypertension you should first attempt Uh, the lifestyle modification the exercise the salt intake and the weight reduction once that is done then we use spironolactone we can use beta blocker alpha blocker centrally acting hydralazine and in fact i have been using arni quite frequently what about arni sir yes i mean this is now Uh, approved in certain societies japanese society and chinese cardiology society have approved arni as a, pay, a treatment for resistant hypertension you can find that in one of my other uh, videos on youtube now in the step wise approach in this patient we started with the spironolactone 50 mg and we found the blood pressure still was not controlled we added moxonidine and bp still was not controlled with this so 
we changed now this time as i told you arni is a good drug to control blood pressure we added scubitril valsartan combination 100 mg twice a day and the blood pressure came to normal right and now uh, we just glanced at the potassium reports which were initially 4 and 4.5 the potassium was 3.2 and 3.1 on repeat potassium examination and this clearly indicated something is going wrong now in here remember the patient is on spironolactam patient is on arb right despite that potassium is low this is a very very important clue to the diagnosis of hyperaldosteronism so what we did we continued rest of the medicines we just stopped aldosterone and asked for angiotensin renin ratio so here we were now let's see what the investigations showed so when do we suspect hyperaldosteronism these are the situations spontaneous or unprovoked hypokalemia diuretic induced severe hypokalemia which persist even if you stop diuretics and then you give sodium loading there is hypokalemia and patient who those who are ac inhibitor and arb and still have a low potassium this is the time when you suspect like in our patient but remember most of the patients would have normal potassium particularly in early stages of hyperaldosteronism so what do we have to do we have to keep our index of suspicion high so what is the common characteristic of hypertension the blood pressure is somewhere around 135 95 90 uh, it's a mild hypertension but it is resistant because it's not controlled you add another medicine the diastolic blood pressure stays the same add another one still stays the same so it is not responding so that could be used as an another clue in case the potassium is normal in these patients word over you will be surprised to see that this is the situation of uh, Uh, let's say the patient had hypertension and had a hypokalemia for 2 years and nobody screened for arr right so arr screening was 1.6 and this is canada ontario okay right so so i think we are not we are not doing bad but the issue is that we are missing a large number of patients just where the indication was potassium low and the patient Uh, was on antihypertensive therapy, not screened for hyperaldosteronism. So have we improved? There have been a lot of literature guidelines published that we should do potassium, and then we should, in case of suspicion, should do the screening of ARR. So have we improved over years? Nothing. We have not moved an inch. Look at this: ninety-five plus patients were never screened. and this is from 2009 to 2015 nothing has actually changed okay so the idea is i am going to give a concept that we should change here now why why we don't do screening of arr why we don't do it probably i guess there are reasons that we th- think that to get an angiotensin and renin ratio you would have to stop all drugs and then do it hmm. maybe you don't want to have patient having severe hypertension okay so that's the commonest reason why we don't do arr okay. uh, ratio no that's not true actually we don't have to do it there is a study which is not very recent 2001 study says that you continue the medicines you stop aldosterone or you stop mra right and on the drugs you can do and your tension values okay so that should be easy you just asking one test so let us say you tell me that uh, what is the big deal if uh, and your tension is not uh, treated in our patient the blood pressure was controlled by multiple drugs including army correct yes sir we still went ahead and tried to find out hypoaldosteronism 
things are controlled why bother no we should bother because aldosterone is not a good hormone it damages the heart it damages the kidneys it damages the brain right okay. it produces lot of sympathetic activity fluctuations in blood pressure and cardiac fibrosis okay now i take you back to my initial slide of the global longitudinal strain mm -hmm. you saw there was left ventricular hypertrophy and there was a reduction in global longitudinal strain mm -hmm. this is the reason okay. because it causes fibrosis so we should still treat that patient okay okay i told you that you can do it on drugs then how do we do it okay first suspect as i told you then you don't need to discontinue all medicine just discontinue uh, mineralocorticoid receptor blocker then you perform arr how do we do it nothing blood sample the plasma renin activity add simultaneously aldosterone levels okay so if abnormal results are there so then we proceed to step 2 if they are you know kind of doubtful then we do something like this now if renin is low and aldosterone is high it is diagnostic you don't need anything else for the biochemistry now if it is borderline then you stop all the drugs okay then you are right then at this stage we stop all the drugs and do it properly mm -hmm. but once this is a uh, diagnostic we go straight to ct scan what was in our patient okay this is what we found aldosterone was 133 more than one more than 25 or 30 aldosterone with low renin is diagnostic of hyperaldosteronism right okay. so this 133 with low renin is diagnostic we don't need to do any challenge test or stop all the drugs here wonderful without stopping drugs we were able to make an assessment and a diagnosis in a patient of hyperaldosteronism so what did we do now we you have uh, apps also available for arr which you can download and put it there and then it can tell you the probability of hyperaldosteronism so what we did then we asked the next step is to ask for ct scan and look for adrenal adenoma or bilateral adrenal hyperplasia there are two conditions in this patient we found there was a adenoma which was a reasonable size on the right side but a smaller one on the left side also so this is the place where you can see there is an adenoma this is kidney that's an adenoma that's the kidney and this is the adenoma here circumscribed lesion so this is ct scan report now here now you have this on both the sides yes correct now you can't take out adrenals from both sides mm -hmm. it would be a problem it will be a serious problem yes sir. so now we need to know is that the bigger tumor producing more aldosterone or a smaller is producing more aldosterone okay correct so what we do is that we do adrenal vein sampling and see where the aldosterone is coming the most and we'll try to fix that side remove the adrenal on that side mm -hmm. in about 70% patients that itself takes care of hyperaldosteronism symptoms okay but in case both are equal there is no lateralization on one side or another then you have to continue with the medical therapy which we were already doing so i think we have uh, learned something good today and at least i also missed this uh, diagnosis patient had been on my follow up for about a year so i think now onwards at least i would be more proactive in looking potassium and looking for arr as quickly as possible yes good idea to subscribe we'll keep on sharing new ideas new thoughts on this channel